Hey everybody, Matthew Doyle from Autodesk here. This week I'm going to show you guys the first shader in Stingray 1.3. This was just added in 1.3 and it gives you a really, really cool first shader to play with for your animals and other objects that maybe like fuzzy dice or pretty much anything you can imagine that can take advantage of this shader for creating fur and hair-like effects uh, at runtime. And uh, you can see here I've got the shader applied to just a simple sphere in Stingray and it has a really good look here. You can really see the hair uh, or fur kind of sticking out here on the edges of the silhouette of the object and uh, also on the inside here you can see the fur pretty well. And uh, what it does is it uses what's called uh, parallax mapping to create offset shells of the mesh and fins that then render out the, uh, the hair. Now if you want to get a more detailed explanation of fur shaders in general, you can go to Google and do a search for Microsoft Research and then uh, real-time fur shader or just fur shader and you'll come up with this abstract here and um, this abstract, I'm not really sure how old this is, but this kind of gives you a good explanation of how fur shaders work in real-time uh, in game engines in general. This may or may not necessarily be exactly how the shader in Stingray has been implemented. Uh, but this is a really good read regardless. It's a little scientific, there's a little math involved, but you know, still it's only a few pages long with some screenshots at the end and it's definitely worth a read if you're interested at all in how fur shaders are generally put together in, for runtime engines. Um, and also if you want to check out the help for Stingray's fur shader, just go to help and documentation and that will bring you to the Stingray help. And here in the Stingray help, uh, I just went to release notes and then scroll down to 1.3 release notes. Scroll down a little further, you'll find the fur shader. You can click on the create fur link here and it'll give you all the basic information on the fur shader itself. And uh, you know, we can see here we have our noise map which actually does the fur generation. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the best kind of noise map to use, at least for my tastes, what I got the best results with. Uh, and then we've got our length map mask which determines how long the fur is. We've got a direction map for determining the direction the fur moves on the body um, and so forth and so on. So let's actually just jump right in here and, and look at how we constructed this, this fur map. So uh, obviously I have a, a sphere object here so let's just go ahead and, and create a new sphere object uh, and we'll just kind of start from scratch so you guys can see everything that I did to build this up. So I'm just going to drop this sphere right here and I'll go into my material folder and I'm just going to create a new material here. We'll just right click here and choose create material standard. And we'll name this guy fur uh, 002 underscore mat. There we go. Alright so this is a standard shader effects material. To make it a fur material we need to go to the property editor here where it says parent resource. We're going to click the little folder icon and this is going to bring up our content browser and we're just going to type fur. All right, so we can see here standard fur. It's in, it's in the uh, core Stingray renderer shader import directory. We're going to select that. All right, and when we do that, that gives us all the settings, uh, the exposed settings from the shader graph for the artist to manipulate. And if we want to actually see the shader graph, I'll just go ahead and click make unique and then open the shader graph in shader effects. So inside the shader graph editor here, once it's fully loaded, we'll be able to look at some of the nodes that are used to create the shader. Now, obviously right here we have our standard base shader, right? And if we click on it, we select it, you're going to see in the properties pa panel here where it says material type, we have uh, fur as one of our available drop downs. You'll also see cloth and clear coat. Those are two other new shaders that came with Stingray 1.3. But we want to just leave this as material type fur. And we can see plugged into the standard base material, we have a whole bunch of new nodes uh, pre-built for us. We have our roughness node, obviously that just controls the specularity uh, of our fur. Then we have uh, ambient occlusion node. Now the really important ones here are plugged into normal and then uh, base color and position offset. So you see position offset is plugged into fur length. So we've got a bunch of nodes here that basically take a texture map and use that to determine the length of the fur. Um, all right, so moving on, we also have connected to that fur direction, again, using a texture map and getting the individual direction of the various uh, uh, individual fur and hair. 
And then we have our fur color plugged in obviously to color, very simple using a texture map. And then here's uh, parallax blurring, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, as we go further into the tutorial. Uh, and this parallax blurring here is plugged into opacity. All right, um, so that's basically the pre-built fur shader. And you know, if, you, if you're so inclined and know enough about shader construction and you wanna come in here and adjust these nodes, uh, you certainly can, obviously, by all means, add other nodes, that, whatever you need to do to tweak to get the exact shader look you're going for. I'm just gonna use the shader as is. I like the way it looks just fine, and I'm not quite as adept at creating shaders. Uh, as some of the guys that uh, put it together. So I'm just gonna rely on their expertise and just tweak some of the settings to get the look I want. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and apply this to our shader ball here. All right, and you'll see the ball just turns black. That's because our default color for the shader is black. I can change that just by clicking on the little swatch here and I'm just gonna make it um, kind of a whitish blue or something like that, all right? Now we can obviously apply a color map. We'll do that in a little bit, but we're just gonna go step by step here. So the first thing we need to do to generate the fur is to apply a noise map. Now this is where you're going to need to be uh, kind of uh, specific with the noise map you use. You could just throw any old noise map on there, but the look you get may not be uh, a very good look. So in fact, let's just try this noise map here. This is a standard noise map, uh, very small speckles. And you can see here uh, the fur that it generates. It's not bad, but bear in mind this fur length is really, really short. So when I start pumping up the fur length really high, you can see that we get a lot of jittering from the parallax effect from this particular noise map. Uh, now there are ways to improve this, obviously. We can, we can play with the parallax blurring to try to get rid of that, but obviously the more blurring you add, the less of the, the effect of the fur individual hair strands uh, is going to be visible. Uh, but that might be a cool look for you, but you can still see we've got some jittering. And this is also based on the distance from, from the camera. So obviously if you move out pretty far, the jittering is lessened. So you get a nice look there, we can see. So what you're going to want to do here in this case is play with your noise map as well as playing with your parallax blur and trying to keep in mind how close your camera is ever going to get to your your object that has the fur shader on it. We can also play with the normal scale of our fur map, our noise map, and the normal scale here obviously uh, basically determines how strong the normals are that are generated by that uh, noise map. Uh, now, the noise map that I ended up using that I found I got a really good look with was actually a larger speckle. And what I did is I just went into Photoshop and I created basically on a white background, I used the um, pixelate filter pointualize okay and then that creates uh, kind of a I created it about a size of 18 here to create these um, pointualized looking pixels and then I just desaturated so I went into image adjustments and desaturate to make it a black and white image and then just save that out as a PNG file and that gives me uh, this look which I prefer over the more uh, smaller speckles and the other cool thing about getting using larger speckles in your noise map is the fur length can tend to be a lot longer than the smaller speckles. So without having too much of the jittery look of your the parallax effect. All right. And then we can, you know, we can tone down the blurring on our parallax effect. We can adjust the normal. All right. Now you're gonna see here in this case I have a very kind of a high spec fur. I can just adjust my roughness here to control that. I'm just gonna set it to one, which means there's basically no specularity happening here uh, in this case. All right, so next up, uh, now that we've got our fur actually generated, we can go ahead and apply our color map. So to do that, I'm just gonna drag this cheetah color map. I'm gonna drag it into the color map spot here and we'll turn on the use color map check mark and it gives us our nice looking cheetah color here. Again, we can play with uh, the parallax blur a little bit and our normal intensity. Okay. All right, so we've got a pretty good look here, but obviously the fur is all sticking out in one direction from the center, which uh, might be the look you're going for depending on the object. But in this case, 
uh, we're going to want to control the direction as well as the length. We want we don't want it all to be exactly the same length. So if you if you imagine, for instance, that you have a tiger, which I just happen to have a tiger here. I'm going to drop him into the scene. Obviously, in some on some parts of the tiger's body, you don't want the fur to be really long. So you can see here on my tiger, I've got you know moderately long hair and fur on his back but then when I come towards his ears and his face I want the length of the fur to get shorter and shorter so we're gonna control that with a length map and then of course we can control the direction the fur moves across his body with a direction map alright so to do that we'll just go back to our object here and back into our materials folder select our fur mat and we'll just drag a texture from our textures folder onto, let's start with the uh, direction mask and then we'll, we'll mess with the, the length. So for the direction mask, I've got just a simple RGB texture here that I created in Photoshop. It's just a, basically a rainbow, obviously, from uh, red, blue, green, we've got some yellow and some, some purple there. Uh, and we're just gonna drag this onto the direction map input field and then enable use direction map. And we can see that right away, it changes the direction of the bend of each individual hair of the fur shader. So underneath the input, we've got a direction amount here. I can basically turn this on and off by dragging the slider. So obviously here's zero, where everything is pointing straight up on uh, the normals from the, the faces of the object. And then as I drag this up, you'll start to see the hairs bend in the direction based on the normal map that's been applied, essentially. So it basically it's an RGB map. You could use a normal map in this case, which works very similar. Um, and there you go. So you get to be able to control the direction of the bend of the hairs. All right, now uh, also here, we wanna be able to control the length. And in this case, uh, I used the same noise map for my length. So I'll just drop that under length and turn on use length mask. There we go, and we're starting to get a lot closer to the shader that I have over here. So we can see we've got a nice uh, asymmetrical look here because of the first uh, length mask. And uh, I mean, I could even use the cheetah texture here if I wanted to, to get a different look. So now the length of the hairs are based on this color map. And uh, so anywhere that it's dark, obviously the, sh the hairs are gonna be very short. Anywhere that it's obviously closer to white, the hairs are gonna be longer. So we get a nice good look there. All right, I'm just gonna jump back to the noise mask though for my length. Now we can also control the length individually here with this uh, fur length input field here. I can raise and lower that. I can go for something really, really short like this. And notice again, the shorter the hair is, the, the better it looks as far as the parallax jittery effect until you get really, really, really close. And then you can see the actual shells and the jittering happening there. But as we zoom out, we get a nice clean look. And then again, if I go really, really long with the shader, it really starts to show the jittering again. But again, if we zoom out, we get a you know much better look there. All right, so I'm just gonna bring that back down to match my other shader ball over here. All right, so now we have full control of the length of the hair across the object using our shader map as well as our texture map as well as the direction using another texture map, an RGB color map. Uh, all right, so that pretty much covers all of the individual input nodes here. And uh, if you look down below the direction amount, again, the last two things that we've already kind of touched on were normal scale. So I can pump up my normal scale to get uh, a little more definition, I guess you could call it here. So like if I, if I have it at zero, you can see that um, the definition is kind of removed. But as I pull up the normal scale here, you can see there's more of a shadowing uh, in between the hairs because of the strength of the normal on the noise map for the fur. So if that's the look you want to go for, obviously you'll pump up the normal scale for that. I'm going to go for something really, really subtle here. All right. And then again, parallax blurring, that's going to allow you to kind of control the jittering effect um, of the parallax offset that's happening on the shader. But again, I find that uh, keeping this kind of low is probably, for me, the best setting. Obviously, if you put it all the way up to one, it pretty much kills the effect. You can see here, there, there's basically uh, no effect happening. But as you bring it back down closer to zero, it starts to look a lot more like hair. So, 
Awesome, great. So that's pretty much it for the first shader. And uh, basically, again, you're gonna need um, a color map and you're going to need a fur length map as well as a direction map and a noise map to control the actual generation of the fur. And keep in mind that the larger the speckles of your noise map, generally, at least for me, the better the look of the fur shader. All right, so that's gonna do it for this short tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and the fur shader is a lot of fun to work with. I'd love to see some of the stuff you guys come up with. Uh, and uh, check in pretty soon for another tutorial on the clear coat car shader. Yeah, I'll be covering that and uh, another short and sweet tutorial there on how to use it. And then uh, maybe next time after that, we'll cover the new particle system, which also uses the shader, uh, shader graph for creating the billboards for particles. All right, so we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks a lot.